Hi guys, um, I am going to explain um, unit five sampling distribution. So let's take a look. In our fifth unit, it has to do with sampling data and the distribution of that. So it should come as no surprise that we're gonna talk about where is the center, the shape, and the spread, um, because this is the foundation of the other chapters that went before. Now, these were the, the um, kind of cheat sheets that I let you guys use, if you remember these two cheat sheets, right? Uh, and these are the formulas that we need for the test. Now, you can have these printed out or you can have your cheat sheets that you had from before. I just took uh, the liberty of squishing it all on one page. So the difference between this side is one population and this is for two populations. So the parameter is the same and it's a lot of notation. So if you watch the videos in unit five, you notice that um, there's a lot of just this notation here. So P is the population proportion, mu is the population mean, and then that would mean the difference between two populations would be that, and the difference between two means would be that. Now, um, what is a statistic and what is a parameter? Now, let's think about this for a minute. A parameter is just something we want to know about the population. It doesn't have to be anything. Maybe it's the number of days in the year that somebody in the population goes on vacation. Um, now, it's so expensive, we couldn't uh, ask everyone in the population. So if we're interested in this information, we could just have people volunteer their information. But notice that's a different shape because it's not going to be the same information. You could also just ask anybody that you might go on vacation and it's convenient to ask the people that you're next to because you got a lot of time on your hands, right? But again, that's not going to be a good sample of the population. So you notice that we make the shape the same as the population shape and this would be a simple random sample would provide a good sample statistic. So why do we do this? Most of the time, it's to save money and time, and everybody likes money and time. So a statistic helps you estimate the parameter so that you don't have to ask everyone in the population. So a P hat is a sample proportion that helps you estimate P. X bar helps you estimate mu when you want to know mu. That would be like the average um, number of days somebody goes on vacation. P would be the average proportion of days they go on vacation. So depending on the question, you're always asking yourself, is this a sample proportion or a sample mean? Or you're asking yourself, if this is a, ooh, I left off some words. I'm going to have to add some words there. Is this uh, two proportions? Um right? So you got to ask yourself, is it a difference of two proportions or a difference of two means? So if we were going to compare, and um, I've heard these comparisons before, that people over in Europe go on vacation more than we do. So we could compare the, uh, the two averages. So mu1 would be the number of days Americans go on vacation, and mu2 would be the average number of days Europeans go on vacation. And we could calculate if there really is a difference all right. And so because each of these populations would have different data points just based on pure variability, we're not going to ask everyone in America <laughs> and everyone in Europe. We're just going to take a sample statistic. So I'm hoping that this makes sense, that we're going to use a sample, the difference of the sample mean to approximate the true difference in the population. OK, so back up here. Um, I just kind of explained this, that the difference of the sample mean would help you estimate the difference in the population, which is what we really want to know about. Um, we could also ask the question, what, what proportion of the days of the year do you take off, right? We could create a proportion, the number of days out of 360, what proportion days, maybe 5 out of 360, something like that. Maybe you take 30 days off out of 360, right? So we could turn that in a proportion. And if you believed that the proportion of people in Europe, that that difference is more, then you could create, um, you could take two samples, right? And estimate the difference in the population. 
Now, what are some other things that kind of come up in sampling distribution? And that's what makes a good statistic? Well, two things really. We want low bias and low variability. So let me explain what unbiased, an unbiased estimate would mean that you're getting an accurate estimate. So these types of questions generally come up on multiple choice questions. So they may not be as pertinent this year, but they were very pertinent when we had multiple choice questions. So an unbiased estimate would be if I have a bunch of data points and the truth is over here, then that's not the best estimator. But if I had a bunch of data points, right, and the truth was right about there, I'd be like, oh, that's pretty accurate. But an even better accuracy is if all the data points were really close together. Then this would be an example of the best estimator because the best way to estimate is if the variability is low and it's accurate to what you know is the truth. Okay, so another popular multiple choice question that comes up in sampling distribution is testing to see whether you know the actual definition of it. So I'm gonna talk about that really quickly. The distribution of a statistic calculated from all possible samples of that size. So if I took a sample size of five, there would be tons and tons of dots, tons, 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 tons of dots. And each one dot represents one person's sample of five. So a sampling distribution is a distribution where each dot is a sample, right? Each dot in previous chapters was a piece of raw data, and now each dot is actually a sample. And that's why we call it a sampling distribution. All right, what other things are important here to think about? Um, well, we notice that we have our conditions here, right? Large counts if it's proportion, and central limit theorem if it's a means question. But these three things, and we'll get into those when we get um, an example question, these three things are important here. Whether you have two proportions, then you're doing large counts for both, both populations, both for America and Europe. And if you're doing two means, you're making sure you ask more than 30 people in both population groups, right? Or if you only asked 10 from America and 10 from Europe, you want each group of 10 to show no strong skews or outliers. Or if you're told that the population data in America is approximately normal and the population data in Europe on this is approximately normal, then you don't have to worry about the other two items. So when you get to an example question, what you're looking for is the shape would be approximately normal if it meets at least one of those three requirements. So oftentimes we jump straight to this central limit theorem, especially if we ask like 100 people in each of the two groups. You're just gonna go straight there because that's the easiest one to check off. Okay, so um, now that we're on the topic of central lim limit theorem, I think it's important to know what is it that it tells us. So what it's saying is if you take a sample distribution then that sample distribution will tend towards normal as the sample size increases. So if I took an N of five, maybe my sample data would look like this. But as I approach 30, 40, 50, 60, as N increases, it, uh, my sampling distribution shape will tend towards normal the higher it goes. And anything over 30, it's definitely going to be approximately normal. So now a few other questions that come up are in relation to standard deviation. And when would standard deviation be the largest? So we use this when we solve for M sometimes too. So notice if you're asked a sample proportion question, standard deviation would be the largest using this formula when the proportion is 0.5. So half the people say yes, half the people say no. That's going to be the greatest variability. Another thing to think about, if you're trying to get a small standard deviation, which we like that, right? The lowest variability is the best estimator. So if you're trying to get a small standard deviation, you wanna make N larger. And I think this is an intuitive. The best estimates means you ask a lot of people. The more people you ask, the more accurate um, your estimator is gonna be. 
Okay, so last but not least, let's get into a question. What would a question look like? And they gave a couple of examples in this section. I just copied one of them. They said, what if uh, baseballs weigh, on average, 146, 146 ounces with a standard deviation of 2.3? And what if we took a sample of 16? So notice that the average, if we took a sample size, the average weight of a baseball should be the same, but the standard deviation will be different. And so we take sigma over the square root of n. And so I'm using these formulas because this was a question about weight and that would be quantitative. So here is my sampling distributions information I need. Here's the mean. Here's the standard deviation and here's n. So we know that the shape is approximately normal if it meets one of these three requirements. So it doesn't meet this one, but if we were told that the distribution of the baseballs was approximately normal, we'd be good. Or if we were given a raw data and we made a quick sketch and there was nothing of this 16 dots, there was nothing too crazy, no outliers or strong skewness, then that would be met. Okay. So if they asked in a problem, what if a sample, the sample mean of 16 balls, what would be the likelihood it would be greater than 147? Notice, just like a normal CDF, I make um, my shading here, and I use normal CDF, my lower bound, my upper bound, my mean, and now here, be very careful, my standard deviation is different than the standard deviation given of 2.3. The reason is because they asked what would be the likelihood that the sampling or the sample mean would be that. And that's the importance and that's the difference between population distributions and sampling distributions. Thanks for joining me, guys. Have a good one.